Need to order. May we have roll call, please? Yes. Present tonight we have Kathy Moore, Barbara Lopez, Lawrence Wright, Tommy Minton, and David Pollock, and absent Curtis Gashlin and Kristen Swidlin. Thank you. Um, if everyone would check your cell phones, make sure they're turned off, please. The first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the August 7th, 2018 meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Mr. Lopez. Second. Mr. Wright. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public comment. This is the time for anyone wishing to speak to the board about um, any item other than the public hearing item tonight. Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Um, we have no public meeting item. Our next item is the public hearing on ordinance number 1676, Florida Hospital Oviedo Marketplace Planned Unit Development Zoning Map Amendment. Do we have the applicant? Can you come up to the podium, please? State your name and address for the record. Yes, Jennifer Wanderslaven. You want my home address or business? Either one. Okay. Um, business is 601 East Rollins Street. And that's the Floor Hospital Orlando address. And I will introduce my team. Would that be helpful? Okay. Uh, with me, I've got Julia Swanson. She is our manager for government relations. I have Adrian Downey Jacks, and she is our entitlement planning consultant with Dick Davis and Associates. Adrian, and then Brooke Stickler is our civil engineer with Kimley Horn. All right. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, we are excited to discuss our proposal um, for our project with you. And um, again, I'm Jennifer Wanderslaven. I'm the senior vice president for Florida Hospital with the responsibilities of our healthcare services in Winter Park and in Oviedo. And um, I want to share with you. I'm going to advance a couple of slides. Um, First of all, that uh, Florida Hospital is a not-for-profit healthcare system. And as part of its mission, provides whole person care to those who can least afford it. And in 2017 alone, Florida Hospital provided over $500 million of community benefit. Now, a portion of these dollars also funds community projects, like the community paramedicine that's here in Seminole County. And that's where paramedics will go to the homes of patients who have been recently discharged from the hospital to follow up on their care. Another recipient of our um, community benefit dollars in 2017 was also an organization here in Oviedo called um, Hope Helps. And I'm sure you're familiar with Hope Helps. It uh, fights hunger and it helps prevent homelessness. Now, as part of... Um, a healthcare consumer. We know that healthcare consumers want to choose their network of care. That's very important because they want to go to their hospital system or their healthcare system that has their cardiologist, their physician, um, knows their medical history, has their medical records. And um, here in 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 Oviedo, Florida Hospital has a significant presence. There is primary care. We have outpatient uh, physical therapy lab. We have urgent care with our center care. And we have specialty care. And in, in 2017, there was actually over 75,000 visits to these Florida Hospital facilities in Oviedo. However, there were also over 13,000 residents of Oviedo who drove 25 to 30 minutes to access a Florida hospital emergency room. And I think that's a long ways to go in a medical crisis. And so tonight, um, our proposed project would allow those residents of Oviedo to access the emergency room of their, their network, their health network's choice, uh, much more quickly in an emergency. And so with that, I'd like to ask, oh, before I do that, I did mention that um, we have, we had 75,000 visits to four hospital facilities here in Oviedo. I just wanted to show you on the map, um, and I think that's, uh, we, you're very familiar with a lot of, this doesn't have a, I was going to see if it has a laser, okay, oh, it doesn't show on the screen. But that cluster of um, different colors, of course, is where the center care is, and where, I'm sure you're familiar with that, off of Redbug, um, a lot of our primary care, and you can see that's also where we would be proposing to have our emergency room. And so with that, I'd like to ask Adrian to come up and go through some further details of our proposed project. Thank you. Thank you, 
Jennifer. Yes, my name is Adrienne Downey Jacks, and I am with Davidson Associates. As Jennifer said, entitlement planning. So I want to talk a little bit about um, the project that's coming coming on board. So tonight, as you know, we are seeking um, a recommendation to the City Council to adopt the ordinance number 1676 to amend the Oviedo Marketplace Plan Unit Development for parcels 15 and 27, which are owned by Florida Hospital, and we're wanting to uh, amend the zoning map. And uh, the, there's a parcel map right there, and you probably have it in your packets as well, but uh, parcel 15 is the one on the north end there, and then the, the bottom one is uh, parcel 27. Our proposed PUD amendment includes a development agreement that establishes development standards for parcels 15 and 27. These parcels were not covered by the development standards previously established for the rest of Obito Marketplace back in 2005. So that is why we are here. We're not proposing any increases to the floor area ratio or entitlements. Rather, we are proposing a land use equivalency matrix, which converts the trips in order to reallocate some of the existing office and hospital entitlements. Originally, the site had about 120 hospital beds, and so now we're not going to be using those. We're going to be doing medical offices and some retail and, and general office as well. So we've met with staff several times. Therese has been very helpful, and we understand all of the issues and the requirements. We support the city staff recommendations and conditions, and we agree to follow them. Having said that, um, we have since submitted our developer's agreement. Our engineers have been working on their site plan as well, and some of the details of the site plan are ironing out. And we've um, it's come to our knowledge that we need some parallel parking spaces, which are um, 8 by 22, so they're 176 square feet, whereas in our developer's agreement we listed it as 180 square feet. So tonight we'd like to um, propose that that get amended. However, um, staff recommends it get added into the developer's agreement. Um, let's see. Our first phase, let me just show you here, a site plan is the ED, which Jennifer mentioned. It's a 24-bed um, ED. We have a very similar facility that is open in Lake Mary right now, and um, I hear there's been a little bit of concern about helicopter noise and things like that. So we did reach out to our Lake Mary facility, and they average one transport a week by helicopter. So I just thought I'd throw that out there just so that people are aware of, of some of those um, issues. And that um, when the uh, emergency transport happens, it's usually transport usually happens in an ambulance, but if there's something very critical, they will use the, the helicopter to transport. So in the case of our helicopters, they are required to fly along uh, the basic routes, and they specifically outline them by the uh, FAA, Federal Aviation Administration, and they usually follow major roads, like they would run along Red Bug Road or the expressway, and then they'll land into the facility, and then they'll um, disperse in the same way. So the, the helicopters come in and out in the same manner. So tonight we seek your recommendation to City Council to adopt Ordinance Number 1676, and we are here to happy to answer any questions you might have about the uh, site plans. And there's a couple of other. There's the you see the boards of what our facility is going to look like. So there's just a few. So questions. Happy to answer any. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant? <coughs> Madam Chair. Mr. Wright. What was the um you asked for uh, additional information, you know, additional qualifications for that 176 square foot. How many of those were there, did you say? There, did you have a count? How many oh, of the parallel spaces? I believe there are five, Brooks, is that right? Five, yeah, five on the site. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions of the applicant? Thank you. May we hear from staff? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a request to amend the city's official zoning map to change the zoning district of approximately 21.93 acres from PUD to PUD, and I will explain that a little bit later. 
Um, the subject property consists of two parcels and is located north of Redbug Lake Road, east of the Vera Drive, and west of Avido Mall Boulevard. The owner it is Adventist Health System Sunbelt Incorporated, a Florida not-for-profit corporation, and the applicant is Adrian Downing Jacks from Dave's and, and Associates. Per LDC Section 2.4 D1F, the local planning agency shall review and make recommendations to the City Council regarding applications for PUDs, development agreements, and official zoning map amendments. For LDC Section 2.5 A3, the City Council shall have final approving authority over amendments to the official zoning map. So the case of uh, Ordinance uh, Number 1676, we are actually not changing the zoning map because it's from PUD to PUD. What happened is that those two parcels were part of the Vido Marketplace GRI, but were never incorporated into the Vido Marketplace PUD. Um, those two parcels were annexed into the city after the PUD was already approved. So they are not part of the Vido Marketplace PUD. So what we are doing now, and, they, and when they were annexed into the city in 2002, they were also giving the PUD zoning district but they were never giving any development standards. So what Ordinance 1676 is doing is uh, creating the development standards through the development agreement for these two parcels. But we don't have an application only for that, so the, the way that we um, process the application is a PUD zoning map amendment. So that is why it, we are um, amending the, the map. The proposed PUDZMA includes a development agreement that establishes development standards for parcel 15 and parcel 27, as these parcels were not included in or covered by the development standards previously, previously established for the rest of the Ovido Marketplace GRI. For the approved Marketplace GRI, parcel number 15 has 59,000 square feet of retail slash office entitlements and parcel number 27 has entitlements for a hospital up to 120 bed, beds or 170,000 square feet and 104,981 square feet of office use. The applicants are not proposing any increases in floor area ratio or entitlements. Instead, they are proposing a land use strip conversion matrix to reallocate some of the existing office hospital entitlements to retail use based on vehicular trips. So they are vested for a number of trips and they have used the matrix to change, you know, um, some uses, but keeping the vested, the top, uh, the maximum vested uh, trips. The applicants want to be able to develop up to 12,500 square feet of retail on parcel 27. The city's transportation consult consultants, VHB, has reviewed the land use strip conversion matrix and found no concerns with the matrix. They also found that the proposed PUD ZMA and reallocated entitlements in parcel number 27 will not cause area roadways, specifically Redbug Lake Road and Ovido Mall Boulevard, to operate below their operated levels of service standards. Water and sewer to the subject property will be provided by Seminole County. The Seminole County Environmental Services Department issued a letter dated March 15, 2018, stating that the county has adequate capacity to provide service, which is only guaranteed following execution by the applicant of a conditional utility agreement. Staff reviewed the request for UDZMA for the requirements of the adopted comprehensive plan and land development code. Staff's findings are provided in the attached supporting data inventory and analysis. The proposed plan uh, PUD district is compatible with adjacent future land use designation zoning districts and its existing land uses. Uh, our city attorney, uh, Mr. Groot, has reviewed ordinance uh, number 1676 and found no objections. A staff recommends approval of ordinance number 1676 with the inclusion of the parallel parking um, space as required by the applicant. Um, there are no budgetary impacts uh, so anticipated as a result of the proposed PUD zoning map amendment, and uh, it is consistent with the economic vitality and development strategic focus area, where one of the goals is to promote diversification of the local economy. And just for you to know, 
um, the architectural plans there, you see the renderings over there, will be considered by City Council in the next City Council meeting. Actually, it's September 17th, if that's the date. And you have, as an attachment, development agreement. The development agreement is short. They are basically uh, asking for the matrix um, to be used for those parcels. They are also requesting some uh, um, uh, parking spaces, um, uh, dimensions that are different from the code. Um, they are also requiring double row parking uh, to be allowed at the north along the Vera Drive and at front of Redbug Lake. Um, and they have um, some signage uh, requests and uh, we all support the, the requests as presented. And I have finished my presentation. I'm available for questions. Thank you. Are there questions of staff? Madam Chair. Mr. Wright. <coughs> um, going back to the request by the applicant, which staff has said they don't, they support adding the language for the parallel parking. Um, how would you suggest, you have a suggestion how we would incorporate that? I mean, the, I'm looking at the development agreement on 21 2C. It really just kind of is a blanket that basically says the parcels 15 and 27 have a minimum parking space requirement of 180. Uh, I don't think I don't think we would want to globally just change that to 176 and reduce it. But um, you have a suggestion how we could language that or, or word that to include that in our motion? That would be specific because again, you know, I, I guess the question is it. It's specific to the use that they're trying to put in now. Do we want that to be applicable to any future use? Well, right now we only have um, the request for the uh, ED. If it's in, in the development agreement, it will be associated with all the, the two parcels. Correct. That's but we can I'm use this for parallel parking only. So we yeah, can do. Yeah, I'm asking that. that that's, maybe that's the language I'm looking for. Is I don't want to just say blanketly reduce it to 176 if there's a way that we can um, limit it, you know, in a sense that it doesn't change the overall. So thing. we can say that this is the minimum um, 180, uh, 180 square feet for standard parking and uh, 176. What were those? Four parallel those, parking. What, what were those dimensions that we were using for? What's our standard parallel parking dimension that we would Our use? regular standard is 10 by 20. 10 by 20. And we allow compact parking by code, 25%. That, this is code. So do we, we have, have a parallel parking dimension? Uh, we do not have a parallel parking dimension. Okay. So, uh, you know, I guess what I'm trying to drill down to is that if we, if we included language then that was specific, just as the, D, the DA says right now, um, that a space is 9 by 18 or 10 by 18 if we indicate language that would say a parallel parking space with a specific dimension square footage then that would be that would keep it consistent with what we've written yes I think so okay. is it okay if I ask the applicant again then what the dimension they were using can you come back up to the podium please Yes. Thank you. The sorry, just, no, that's fine. Here, so. The dimension uh, we're asking for is 8 by 22, which is 176 square feet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, one more question. Go ahead. Teresa, the... the Looking at the signage, you know, the, and again, city has no uh, issues with the signage. Um, is is the signage consistent at this point then with what the uh, Oviedo TUD already is, the mall parking mall property? The, the, the signing looks intensive to my, and again, without knowing a comparison, I really I'm asking for guidance from the your perspective if if it's consistent with what's on the marketplace now. Yeah, I think looking at the whole, it's, it's, it's a large area, right? And they have several entrances. So I think the, the signage um, is also good for um, direction, right? To, to, to direct, you know, uh, uh, the, the public. The ED, the uh, department, the emergency department, I think requires some additional uh, signage. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, right? I'm, I'm just asking if it's consistent, that's all. 
I think it is. Okay. Yeah, we have uh, we see um, we have the code as a basis, but we also see case by case if there is additional need. Is um and I apologize if it's possible. Can you refresh my memory? Where is the the large sign that we approved for? Is that at Dovera or is it at the other intersection? Um, I mean, you, know, you know which sign the large ground monument sign that we sure. approved for the mall. It is at. Um, it has to be at the Vera, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's at Dovera, the large it has line. to be at the Vera. Yeah, that's where it's at. Yeah. So there's, from a visual perspective, yeah, I mean, again, I, I'm not, I don't want to speak into the crowd. I was just asking whether or not there was going to be any visual conflict with that sign versus some of the other signage they're looking at. I think we have an exhibit for the sign. The sign, can you find it? In, in this here? Oh, oh, maybe not. Oh, it's not included in this. Sorry. No, you don't have. We have here, and I'll give you. <laughs> okay. I, I think you know it's what? On, I'm sorry. I think it's on page 27. There's the ground signage master plan. <laughs> Exhibit 3. And I apologize for not asking these questions in advance to give you time to Can I approach you to show where is the... Remember how high that one was? Um, okay, so we're consistent. And that's really all I was looking for, is I was just looking for the consistency there, that's all. 14 is our maximum now with deviation. So we have never, you know, reached any, any sign that is higher than 14. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Okay, it's a public hearing. We'll open it up. Is there anyone here from the public wishing to speak on this matter? Seeing them, we'll close the public hearing. What's the board's pleasure? Madam Chair. Mr. Wright. I would make a, re a motion to recommend. Is this adoption or approval? Recommend. Recommend uh, approval of ordinance 1676 and that we add language to the development agreement on section 2C, which is parking, that would add a parallel parking space dimension of 8 foot by 22 foot with a maximum square footage of, or minimum square footage, excuse me, of 176 square feet. Okay, is there a second? Second. Mr. Mitten, was that yeah, you? That was me. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? Uh, just briefly. Mr. Pollock? Uh, I just want to say to the applicant, I think the Oviedo is going to appreciate having the ER here. And so from the people I know, we'll appreciate you guys bringing it here. So thank you for that. That's the only discussion I have. I have one. Mr. It's sad, sad to say that it took 15 plus years for Florida Hospital to recognize that Oviedo is a community. And I'm really ashamed of you folks. For waiting that long. That's it. Okay. Is there anything else? Can I read the language on parking and see if it's agreeable? Yes, yeah. that'd be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Parking space. This is stream of conscience here, sort of. Parking spaces for parcels 15 and 27 will have a minimum parking square footage of, and I know you said 176, but listen, listen to what I'm saying first before you. Okay of 180 square feet and be 10 by 18 feet, 10 feet by 18 feet, except for parallel spaces, which shall have a minimum square footage of 176 square feet and be 8 feet by 22 feet in dimension. That work? That work. Yeah. I, took out the, I took out the 9 by 18 because actually 9 by 18 is 162. I just took that out. 
Mr. Wright, that right? um, you agreed with that. Mr. Minton, you were the seconder on the motion. Is that sufficient for you? I'm good. Okay. Is there any other okay. discussion? Yep. Okay, um, we have before us the motion to recommend with the added language. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion nay. carries. I'm sorry, do we have one nay? Yep. Okay, one nay. Motion still carries. This matter will be considered by the City Council on September 17th at 6.30 in these chambers. Good luck with the project. Okay, our next item on the agenda is discussion items. We don't have any um, listed. Is there anything we need to discuss? Okay. Well, I, I do have one question. Mr. Minton. So the presentation or training or whatever you want to call it for we were going to do tonight. Yeah, I'm not going to do it tonight. That's it. But what I plan on doing, if it's okay, Madam Chair, is every meeting, what I, what, if it's okay with you, and I don't know whether you want it at the beginning or at the end. I have a... I, but I have an idea of where it would be better, but you, you, you need to ask me that. It is just to plan a five to ten minute, and I, you know, little educational spiel on a different aspect of land use issues. Five to ten minutes, every meeting. And that way it's sort of a, a bite-sized, bite, that's a stupid phrase, isn't it? A bite-sized <laughs> bite. But, uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, in that way, you know, it's ongoing, too, and you don't get this whole... Sometimes, you know, you do a half an hour thing or even longer, and everything sort of gets blended in as opposed to maybe targeting, like, the, you know, next time I'm going to talk about... The first time I want to talk about takings, but basic taking law, exactions. And, and uh, how does that sound? And, Mr. Root, where would you suggest that we do that in the meeting? At the end, not the beginning. That sounds appropriate to me. I guess my, my question for bringing it up was, was mostly to see if there was something that spurred the specific, what was the impetus behind this to say we wanted to do this? I mean, if it's just an educational thing just to get us no, to speak, that's great. But the, I didn't the know chair asked me to do one, and I thought that instead of doing one, uh, that just spend five minutes each, okay. each five to ten minutes each session just doing a different topic, you know, as a, and that might be interesting, actually. And if it's not, we can stop, you know. That's what I was thinking, too. So, okay. No, of course. I'm just, just curious because I didn't know if there was something okay. coming no. that. No, no. no. <laughs> we, we needed no. that first to no. that's something that was not okay. remembering or something there. Okay. Can we do a little um, introductory theme song called Lonnie's Laws? And you can. <laughs> I'll put it together if you think the board works. If you'll put it together, sure. <laughs> as long as I don't have to sing it. <laughs> For your sake. Okay, if there's nothing else, our future meeting dates are September 18th and October 2nd. Teresa, do we know if we have items yes, for those? We'll have. Okay. Um, and as always, if you know you can't be present, please let Dahlia know as soon as possible so we make sure we have a quorum. I can tell you right now, September 18th, I will not be here. And I probably will not be as well. Okay, Talia, did you get those two? Okay. No, it's not confirmed, but I'm iffy because I have to drive back from St. Pete that afternoon, so it just depends on if I get back in time or not on the 18th. Okay, so that's three that probably won't. I am definite. I can tell you right now. So. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's nothing else, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Minton, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We stand adjourned. Yeah.